So we are discussing the sample question paper second on biology. Okay, right? So our question is about the rear. So what does the rear doing? Uh, what, uh, what what was the rear doing? That rear took a stem of white rose plant. And joined with other root of pink rose plant. So, and in the next part, the state what type of reproduction process he was using, and also tell about the budding reproduction with example. Okay, so here you can see that there is two part of the question. That is uh, about the rhea. What does rhea? Uh, what is rhea doing? And secondly, uh, the question is asking about the budding reproduction. Budding reproduction. Right, so Rhea is using the vegetative propagation, vegetative propagation method. Okay, and in our biology, vegetative propagation is a part of this type of reproduction. That is yes, that is the asexual type of reproduction. Okay, how many types of asexual reproduction? Tell me in the comment section. Yes, there are the uh, there are. Firstly, there are the fission asexual reproduction, which we have read. Okay, and the fission also there is multiple and the binary fission, multiple and binary fission. In the next, there uh, there is fragmentation. Then there is regeneration. Then vegetative propagation. So I'm writing it in a short form. And then there is budding, pore formation. Okay. So these are the types of the asexual reproduction. So Rhea is using the vegetative propagation. And in the vegetation, uh, sorry, in the vegetative propagation, there are also three types like the cutting. Layering and the grafting. So, in the previous video, in the first sample question paper, we have talked about the vegetative propagation that it is how it is different from the seeds reproduction. How it is different from the seeds reproduction. So we have discussed in detail what is the vegetative propagation and what is the seed reproduction. So in the seeds, we are using the seeds. Okay. And in the vegetative propagation, we are using the parts of the plant, like the stem, the leaves, roots, right? So we are using the parts of the plant and we reproduce the plant from these parts, right? So what is Rhea using? Rhea using the grafting process. What is the grafting process? See, we take a plant, or we take a stem of the plant. So Rhea using the white rose stem plant. Okay. So Rhea using the white rose. Okay. So Rhea is using the stem of the white rose plant, and it is it is it is um, joining with the roots of the pink rose plant so suppose this is a root of the pink, pink rose plant okay suppose this is a root of the pink rose plant and we are using the white rose plant and suppose this is the white rose plant and 
it is grafted over the pink rose plant and it is joined by the uh, soil or the cow dung okay so we have graft uh, we grafted the white rose plant this time of the white rose plant with the pink rose plant okay and now this is joined after some time when we use uh, when we do the watering watering to these plant okay when we uh, do the proper care uh, proper care of this plant to grow so after some time we will see that this plant is grow in a new plant new full fledged plant because these are uh, these are uh, this plant is ma ma made by the white rose and the pink rose plant okay so these are the grafting process when we use two plant firstly the stem of the plant and the root of the plant and we join together and after some time this plant grow into a new plant okay so this is the grafting process and in the budding reproduction what happens suppose this is a uh, the budding example let me take the example of the hydrum okay right so what happens in the budding reproduction in a specific part of the area of the hydra let's say here so there is bud uh, bud grows as an outgrowth and after some time the, when the bud grows in a when the bud uh, this bud will mature so it will detach from the hydra and grows in a full fledged hydra also okay so it will detach and after some time it will mature and grow as a full fledged hydra so you can see from the budding the whole new hydra will be formed okay so these are the budding reproduction now let's see how we will write it in a answer in our answer okay here So Ria was using. Firstly, you have to tell what was Ria using. So Ria was using the grafting vegetative propagation of asexual reproduction. So what I have told you that is Ria using the grafting, sorry, grafting vegetative propagation, and which type of this? This is a type of the asexual reproduction. Now you have to tell. Uh, you don't have to dis, uh, describe the grafting vegetative reproduction. Uh, sorry, grafting vegetative propagation, because the question is not as uh, not asking that. Okay, so you just tell the name. What was Ria using? And in the next step, you have to tell the uh, what is budding, and you have to describe the budding reproduction as well. Okay, so budding is an asexual reproduction process in which bud develops as an eye outgrowth. as an outgrowth due to repeated cell division at one specific site so i have told you that this is a hydra this is a suppose this is a hydra okay and what happens in the hydra that a bud will bud develops as an outgrowth okay but develops as an out outgrowth and in this outgrowth process uh, behind this outgrowth process there is a cell division is happening okay you know the what is the cell division okay at one specific site so here now this a uh, bud will uh, grow as a tiny a tiny individuals like uh, this bud grows day by day and when it will mature enough okay like this okay so it will mature now and now it will be detached from the hydra so this hydra separate and this hydra separate and it is a uh, full fledged grown in a hydra so this is a budding reproduction process where a bud develops as an outgrowth due to repeated cell division at one specific site and these buds develop into tiny individuals and when fully mature detach from the hydra detach from the body detach from the parent body and become new independent individuals okay so this is a budding reproduction an example will be the hydra you have to tell them the example so tell them example also, right 
Now let us move to the next question. So what are the example of the ornamental plant? And what is the common process we can use for them to grow? So what this question is asking? So this is asking for the example of the ornamental plant. What is the ornamental plant? The plant which we, can, which we using for the decoration purpose, right? So like the money plant, so there are various type of plant which we can use as a decorative purpose. Okay, so these are called the ornamental plant. And what is the common process we can use for them to grow? So you have to tell them the uh, process that we can use for uh, we can use for them to grow. Okay, so what are the common process? We have read about the tissue culture. Tissue culture. So this method is used for the ornamental plant to grow. Okay, right. So let us see that. How we will write the answer. Here, yeah. firstly, you have to tell them the example. What are the example of the ornamental plant? So, money plant, string of pearls, peace lily, Chinese money plant, air plant, water bamboo. So, money plant and the water bamboo, you have seen them. And for this plant, for the general knowledge you can see them in the google if you type uh, if you type the these name the picture will show you okay right so if you want to see them you can just google secondly you have to tell them the process okay so the common process we can use for ornamental plants to grow that is tissue culture tissue culture in this process and what happens in this process in this process new plants are grown by removing tissue or separating cells from the growing tip of the plant. Suppose this is a plant, this is a money plant, okay? So we take this plant and we, what we will do, we will just remove the tissue or the, remove the tissue or we will just take the tissue or the cells of this plant and by these tissue and the cells, we will produce a new plant, okay? So this is a, a chemical type of method. We will use some chemicals and we will do the proper care and then a new plant will be produced, okay? So these are the tissue culture process and this is generally used for the ornamental plant, right? So these are the some examples and these are the tissue culture process. You can remember them, uh, remember these examples, right? One or three examples like the money plant, air plant, and the water bamboo. You already reading, you already know. Just few more names you should know, right? So let's move to the next question. So this is the last question of uh, the two marks, right? So we have completed this six question, and we have to. See the last question that is the seventh. So, in which form ovary and ovule turn into after reproduction take place in a flower of the plant? And also tell the steps of reproduction in the plant. So, you know that there is the here you have to tell them the steps of reproduction. So, what are the first uh, steps of reproduction in the plants? Firstly, there is the pollination process pollination process. So here in this question, you have to tell them the only the name of the steps of the reproduction in a plant. You don't have to describe all the steps. Okay, right. And in the first part, you have to tell them that ovary and ovule turned into after reproduction. So what does ovary become and what does ovule become after the reproduction takes place in the flower of the plant? Okay, right. So firstly, we will uh, see what is the pollination process. In the pollination process, uh, there is a pollen grains. And where does the pollen grains fi find? Uh, in the anther, right? Pollen grains. So it is found in the anther and anther is the male reproductive part. And from the anther, it is moved to the stigma. The stigma is the male, female reproductive part.
So they move to the stigma. Stigma is a female reproductive part, and stigma is sticky. Also, the, the it can hold it easily. The pollen grains, and by which means of transferring these pollen grains from the anther to the stigma, that is the wind or the insects or some birds. So, so these are the means of transferring, and from this stigma, these pollen grains burst into a filament and reach to the ovary. Okay, so they reach the ovary now, and here in the ovary, the fertilization takes place, and after some time, uh, when the fertilization takes place, when the uh, female egg cell, if we know that in the ovary we found the female egg cell, and the pollen grains are the just like the male egg cell, and they fuse to form a zygote. Zygote. Then, zygote is the single cell because this is forming from the two different cells, right? And after the zygote, the cell division starts. Cell division starts, and then the ovary is turned and the ovule is turned into a form. We will see what forms turn into this, and this is how the reproduction takes place in the uh, plant. So, in the ovary, there is a fertilization process. So, so this is the second step fertilization process okay then the uh, third process is the seed forming and the uh, fourth process is the germination of the seed right so let's see how we will write the answer here yeah. so the answer is ovary grows rapidly and ripens and turns into a fruit so ovary turned into a fruit ovary turned into a fruit after reproduction takes take place in flower and ovule de develops a tough coat and gradually converted into a seed so ovule ovule converted into a seed and also the tough coat around the seed right so we know that in the fruit we see the seeds right so uh, in 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 a ovary there are uh, there are also that there are also one ovule also there are multiple ovules also so whatever the number of the ovules in the ovary uh, there will be the seeds uh, the number of the seeds in a fruit right because the ovary is turning into a fruit and whatever the number of the ovules in the ovary, uh, ovary present so these are the numbers of the seeds in the fruit right we say the uh, let's say the example of the apple so in apple if we cut a apple in this type so we found some seeds around here in the apple and okay we found some seeds also so this is the part of the ovary the whole fruit is the part of the ovary okay because ovary is turning into a fruit and the seeds we are finding in the fruit is the ovule that is the female egg cell and it is turning into a seed and the tough coat around the seed right so this is the ovule and if we found let's say we found the three or four seeds in this apple in this apple so uh, it is indicating that uh, there are uh three or four uh, ovule in the in this the ovary in the uh, the flower uh, the flower plant of the apple uh, in the ovary there are three or four ovule right so these are the answer that ovary grows rapidly and ripens and turn into a fruit after reproduction takes place in the flower and ovule develops a coat tough coat and is gradually converted into a seed right So steps of reproduction in plant: pollination, fertilization, formation of seeds, and the germination. So you know all these process, and we don't have to describe all the process. We just tell the name, and the steps of the reproduction plant is done. Right? So these are the questions of two marks. Now let's move to the questions of three marks. Right? so this is our three mark question and we have six question of three marks okay so let's start from the first question that is give one example of the 
each sexual sorry a sexual reproduction of binary fission multiple fission regeneration fragmentation budding vegetative propagation and spore form this is second question this is third this is fourth fourth and this is fifth okay so we have next question in the next slide right one sec two three four five so let's discuss the first question so you have to give the example of each asexual reproduction this is a very simple process sorry this is a very simple answer so let's see so here this is the answer so what is the example of the binary fission yes the amoeba multiple fission for the multiple uh, multiple fission we have the example of the plasmodium regeneration planaria fragmentation spirogera budding we have the example of hydra vegetative propagation you can give the example of the rose plant spore formation you can give the example of the rhizopus okay right so these are some example of the all the asexual reproduction whatever in asked in the question right so let's move to the second question and uh, that is so this is the second question draw the diagram of uh, sorry draw the diagram of male reproductive organ and mention the following with their function so you have to mention the uh, uh, testes penis and vast difference and with their function right so you have to tell them the function also of all this so let's see so i have uh, told you in our previous video that how to draw the reproductive organs of the flower and as well as the human beings easily so you can watch that video and uh, that is available on the youtube right so these are the diagram of the male reproductive organ right so here this is the uh, testis this is the penis and there is a vas deferens so what are the function of the testis formation of sperm takes place here you know that formation of sperm takes place there uh, in the testis right so why the sperm is uh, taking the sorry why the sperm formation is taking only the testis and why it is outside the body represent because that see our uh, the sperm cannot be formed in the normal body temperature so they required less temperature uh, less temperature than the normal body temperature right so we have uh, sorry so the formation of sperm take place in the testis right and penis they act as a pathway for transferring sperm to the vagina so from the penis the sperm is transferring from the uh, male reproductive part to the female reproductive part right and what does the vas deferens do the function of the vas deferens is transports mature sperm to the urethra in preparation for ejaculation right so the uh, function of the vas deferens is transport the mature sperm because the sperm is produced from the testis it goes uh, through the uh, pathway of the trans deferens uh, sorry vas deferens and the sperm which is produced earlier it is not mature enough that it it can be transferred uh, into the vagina right in the female reproductive part okay so what vas deferens transport the mature sperm to the urethra in preparation for the ejaculation right so these are the functions you can write in your examination if the question asked or if the question come into your examination right and this is how you can make the diagram it is very simple that you have to draw a circle then you have to draw like this and just indicate all those parts like this is the testis this is the penis and the vas deferens for the vas deferens draw one more circle here and just show this type so this is the vas deferens right 
so this is the diagram of the male reproductive part and now let's move to the next question so the third question is why testes so here it comes uh, what i just told you that why uh, the, the sperm cannot be formed in the inside the body and why testes is present in outside the body right so why testes cannot present inside the body what is the contribution of sperm in the fertilization process of human beings state the process of reproduction in human beings and how the birth of baby will take place so there are lot of question in a first in whole question right firstly you have to tell that why testes cannot present inside the body so this is because of the sperm formation because the sperm cannot be formed in the inside the body why because uh, sperm required the less temperature less temperature than the normal temperature of the body right what is the contribution of sperm in the fertilization process of human beings so you have to tell them the uh, contribution of this sperm what does the uh, sperm contribute so because of this sperm uh, the uh, male egg cell is transferred to the so this is a male egg cell right so this male egg cell when transferred to the female egg cell uh, when transferred to the female reproductive part so they will meet uh, it will meet to the female egg cell and they fuse to form a zygote right and from there the uh, uh, baby formation is take place and this is the first step where the sperm meet the female egg cell and forms a zygote so this is the contribution of this sperm because without the sperm the fertilization will not take place and the process of the forming baby will not take place also right and the state the process of reproduction in the human beings and how the birth of baby will take place so firstly the sperm goes to the vagina and through the vagina it move to the uh, fallopian tube or you can also call this fallopian tube that is ov duct and in the fallopian tube it will meet to the female egg cell female egg cell female egg cell then they fuse to form a zygote and then this zygote is turned into a then cell division start cell division start right and when the cell division because the, uh, this zygote is a single cell right when the cell division starts the embryo form and after the embryo organs are formed then when the organs are formed then it is called the fertile right and after the fertile when the baby is mature enough to uh, to born then the baby will form right so it takes 9 9 it takes 9 months 9 months to born a baby right so this is the uh, process of reproduction in the human being so we will see how we'll write the answer because uh, i think this is a long answer right yes so the formation of germ cell or sperm take place in the testis testis are located outside the abdominal cavity in scrotum because sperm formation requires a lower body temperature than a normal body temperature so this is the reason behind this test is that it is outside the body right so you have to tell them the location of the test is and uh, just tell the reason why it is present why it not present in the inside the body because of this sperm because sperm cannot form inside the body why because of the temperature right sperm fuses with the female germ cell now uh, this is the answer of the second part right sperm fuses with the female germ cell and fertilization takes place and form zygote without sperm the fertilization will not occur so you have to tell them the sperm contribution that is with the sp uh, the sperm and the female germ cell fuse to form a zygote and the fertilization takes place without meeting the sperm with the female germ cell the fertilization will not take place and this is the contribution the sperm do right now you have to tell them the process of reproduction in human being so you can also um, do the uh, you can also do the illustr illustration part like you can
like you can indicate that uh, from where the reproduction starts in the human beings so the first part is the sperms enter through the vagina passes during sexual intercourse so firstly you can write it also this way when you, you don't have to write uh, like uh, all this theory type so you can also do the process type like uh, sexual intercourse sexual intercourse then then you can write the sperm plus female axel use then zygote form right then embryo form then fetus form and then the baby born and whole it take place the ninth month nine month nine month nine month okay. so you can tell them also this way but uh, i think the theory part will be better because it gives you a whole coverage right you, and in the last you can also draw this like the sequence part right so sperm travel upwards and reach the oviduct and fuses with the female egg and egg will fertilize to form a single cell zygote right so this is the second step where the sperm travel upwards so sperm enter in the vagina and the sperm travel upwards and reach the oviduct so in the oviduct the fertilization will take place the egg will be fertilized when it will meet to, with the sperm then it will be fertilized right and form a zygote then in the next step the cell division starts and zygote turned into ball of cells or embryo so embryo what is embryo embryo is a ball of cell right because zygote is a single cell so cell division starts in the in the female uh, sorry in the female reproductive part in the oviduct right and zygote turn into a embryo embryo is impl implanted in the lining of uterus so embryo where the embryo implanted it in the uterus and gets nutrition from a special tissue called placenta so embryo what is embryo so embryo is a group of the cells ball of the cells so the cells also require nutrition to grow okay also require nutrition for the cell division right so it gets nutrition from special tissue which is called the placenta so it, it is like this sorry suppose this is a uterus and the embryo is implant, uh, implanted here and it gets the nutrition from the mother body by the tissue by the special tissue which is called the placenta okay so from the placenta the transfer of the nutrition takes place from the mother body to this embryo right embryo continue grow and develop organs to become fetus okay now when the organs grow then it is called the fetus nine months time will take place to develop a baby inside the womb after nine months the birth of the baby will take place so this is a simple process you can write or you can do the sequence part also right and if you want to draw the female reproductive part you can draw uh, either you don't want to do just don't do okay just uh, do the process of the reproduction right and write it in a step way don't write it as a paragraph way okay so write it in a step way in a bullet form you can do the bullet type yeah right bullet type sequence right now let us move to the next question here so this question is from the chapter 15 like in a food chain plant grasshopper frog snake and hawk so uh, the food chain is given in the question which of the organs present the third trophic level and in this food chain you have to write the third trophic level which organs represent the third trophic level like 
and here a question is also asking that if frog gains only thousand joule energy, right? If frog has the thousand joule energy, then find out how much energy transfer to the hog. So, what energy the the trans uh, the hog gained from this sequence or this this chain? That is the frog, snake, and the hog. So, how many uh, energy or how much energy is transferred to the hog? Right? So you have to tell them. Do so you have uh, read about the ten percent law energy flow? Right. So, firstly, you have to tell them that in a food chain, what is the third trophic level in the food chain? This is the frog. So, the frog is the third trophic level. Now, if frog gains thousand joule energy, then according to the law of ten percent energy flow, what is the law of the ten percent energy flow? Suppose there is a chain, like like we take the example of this chain. There is a plant, then grasshopper, then frog, then a snake. And then the hog, right? So plant gains the energy from where? So it gains the energy from the sunlight, from the sun, right? So suppose the plant gains the energy ten thousand, right? So only ten percent will energy is transferred through the grasshopper. Why? Because plants also do some work. They do the photosynthesis. They require some energy to store, and they require some energy to grow. Grow the plants, right? So they have also the function to uh, to work or, or okay to complete the function. So they require the energy for that also. So they use the energy, they store the energy, and only the ten percent energy will be transferred to another level, right? So when from ten percent energy will be transferred to another level, so how much energy will be transferred? So thousand energy will be transferred to the grasshopper. Then Hundred energy will be transferred to the grass. Then ten energy will be transferred to the snake. Then only one energy will be transferred to the hog. So this is how the ten percent law is followed. And why the ten percent law is followed? Because all organisms do the functions and do require some energy to store in their body and also require some energy to work. Right. So they uh, use that energy. And uh, when the other organisms eat. That all means that only the ten percent energy will be transferred, right? So, if the frog, so in the frog, in this question, the frog gains only thousand joule energy, right? So, the ten percent of this thousand is hundred, right? So, it is for the snake. So, snake gains the hundred joule energy. Now, the ten percent also, uh, the ten percent from the hundred will be transferred to the hog here. Oh. Right, so only ten joule energy will be transferred to the hog. So hog will get only ten joule energy. So this is your answer. So the hog will get ten joule energy. Right. So this is how you can uh, do the answer of this question. So let's move to the next question. Yeah. So, what is energy flow? This is first question. You, okay, right? This is the second question. This is the third question. This is the fourth, and this is the fifth, and this is the sixth. Fifth and sixth. Yes. Yeah. So, these are not the one question. This is the different different, right? So, in the fifth question, the question is asking what is energy flow? Two by flow chart. Why the chemicals get accumulated and increased by every trophic level in food chain? See, you have read about the energy flow, energy flow, and the bioaccumulation, bioaccumulation, right? So, in the energy flow, the energy is transferring from one trophic level to the another trophic level, and by each and every trophic level, the energy is de decreasing, right? We have seen just we have seen just the example, right? Uh, from if the plant has a in the plant has a thousand energy, so in the last topic level only the less energy will be transferred, right? So here you can see that that the energy is decreasing by each topic level. Okay, so this is decreasing, 
energy is decreasing by each tropic level. And in the bioaccumulation, what happens? Accumulation, accumulation, uh, bioaccumulation, what happens? It is increasing by each tropic level. So it is related about the pollution in the each tropic level, which is uh, accumulated by each tropic level, right? Suppose this is a plant. So this plant is grown by the fertilizers, right? So uh, farmers do the fertilization, uh, uh, sorry, but farmer, uh, farmer grows this plant by the fertilizers, right? So this plant have taken the fertilizers and when it is aided by the, like the grasshopper. So some uh, fertilizers, uh, these fertilizers are the poll pollutant chemicals, right? So these chemicals go, transfer to the grasshopper and it is grown, right? And from the grasshopper to the another tropic level, it is more than the previous level, right? So it is accumulated by each tropic level. These pollutants or the chemicals which is transferring from the plants to the another tropic level, so it is accumulated by each tropic level and this is called the bioaccumulation, where the pollutants, pollutants in the environment, pollutants in the environment or in the food chain is accumulating by each tropic level, it is called the bioaccumulation, right? So in this question, uh, this question is asking about the bioaccumulation. Why it is, why the chemicals get accumulated and increased by each tropic level? So there are some reasons behind it. So we will see what are those reasons, right? Here. So energy flow, firstly, we will see what is energy flow. The energy which is transferred from one trophic level to another trophic level is known as the energy flow in the food chain and the food grid, right? So this is simple, you can understand that. The flow of the energy is unidirectional. That is, it cannot be transferred back to the previous level. When, it, when the energy is transferred from the plant to the grasshopper, so it cannot be transferred to the grasshopper to the plant again, right? So it cannot be reversible. It is a unidirectional process. Right? So that is cannot turn back to the previous tropic level. The energy available at each tropic level gets diminished progressively due to loss of energy at each tropic level. We have seen that the 10% energy loss follow and by each tropic level, the energy loss. Why? Because they also require some energy for their functions, for their reproduction, for their growth, right? And for their storage. So uh, by each tropic level, the energy will be lost and uh, the 10% energy law will be followed, right? So you have to draw the flow of energy in an ecosystem. So this type you can draw, like from the sunlight, uh, the producer gain, uh, producers gain the energy from the sunlight and from the producer, it is transferred to the herbivorous, then carnivorous, then top carnivorous, right? So this is how the energy is followed, uh, sorry, this is how the energy is flowed in a ecosystem. So you can draw this diagram. Next, we will see the, the chemicals. So we will see the uh, reason behind the bioaccumulation. Why the chemicals or the pollutants get accumulated by each tropic level, we will see the reason. So the chemicals are not degradable. You know that they cannot be degradable. Hence, these get accumulated progressively and increased by each tropic level. So the reason behind that, that the chemicals is not degraded, right? So this is the answer. Now let's move to the next question. So the sixth question is, among all the life process, life essential process, do you think that reproduction is also a life essential process? Give your views. So it is, <clears throat> this question is about your views that what is the life essential process? Life essential process is that process that we cannot live or our body we cannot, uh, our body cannot be survived there without them, right? So what are those process like the respiration process, excretion, digestion? So these are the life essential process. Without this process, the body, body will not work. Body will not work or will not, we will not survive. But reproduction process is, based on our own 
right the living beings can be survived without the reproduction process that is why it is not an life essential process but is required for the population or but it is required and important for the population why because because of the reproduction process the population grows and the life will be alive uh, make existence right so if a uh, suppose there is a cat uh, sorry there is a cat and the cat species uh, decide uh, decided that that they will not reproduce further so after some time we will see that the cat is a species of the cat wiped out from the environment okay so that for the existence of the life for the species for the population the reproduction process is essential or the important or we can say that it is a important process but it is not an life essential process so the answer will be the reproduction is not an life essential process but we will we can say that it is a important process for the species right for the survival of this species for the existence of this species right so let's see how we can conclude the answer the whole answer so we will write the process which is necessary for our body to survive like respiration circulation nutrition excretion and is known as the life essential process so this is all the process which is by this the body can function right as we know that reproduction is a biological process living beings have the ability to pre reproduce of spring so firstly we will tell them what are the life essential process then we will tell them what is the reproduction process uh, because the uh, question is asking about that right so this is a process which is responsible for continuation of life now we will tell them that what is the importance of the reproduction process and even it is not done it will not affect the individual because an individual can survive without this process so we can say that reproduction is not an essential Uh, not a life essential process but it is important for the living beings and the environment right so this is how we can conclude whole answer on a positive note right and uh, at last the conclusion is that that the reproduction is not an life essential process it is important for an individual for the species for their existence of life for the continuation of life in the environment right so this is all the three marks question and in the next video we will see the four marks question right so thank you for joining the class thank you everyone.